okay, so this is an outlet for me to be with other people and other people to be with people like me. You know what Being I mean? Being in those other environments, broadening your horizons. Right. A language that spoke to me, characters that looked like me, street characters on the train, mm. wild styles, colors. You, you know, you see like steam throw-ups going over a production. Like you don't see, you don't never see, you don't never hear about that side of how, you know, scene was destroying trains too. Just like as much as Cap. Killer Killer Podcast. Killer Killer Official Street Culture TV. Instagram UK Frontline. Beatbox created. Killer Killer. And we need to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Keller Podcast. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, Killer Keller Podcast, live and direct once again. We are here, here serving, serving the community, serving the culture. Yes, where you want to be. You don't want to be anywhere else. Strictly here, London going transatlantic today. Um, if you're a newbie, you know what to do. Get the television app free. Download iPhone, Android for all of your street culture occupations and sports. Get yourselves ready for the upcoming Hoddle Wars. It's time to graph punks up and get up with some NFT gaming. Also, big shout out to Chief Rocker Gear from streets to stage. Chief Rocker is the streetwear of champions. Um, inside the house. Big influence of mine, to say the least. One that was media mogling early doors um, within the sphere of hip hop and graffiti and beyond. Um, a little killer keller of his time wandered into Mr. Bongo's and discovered what was the video magazine called GTV. Now, for those of you who don't know about GTV, this was the precursor for a lot of what turned into social media nowadays. But at its time, a guy called Dulio was uh, pioneering the idea of how far graffiti and hip hop as a genre can go. And I'm um, very blessed and fortunate to have the man here himself, DJ, producer, creative starburst, and more Dulio inside the place. GTV, how are we feeling, my brother? What's up? What's up, everybody? How's everybody doing? You know, I like to. Say I miss all my cross seas brothers out there, man. I didn't even want to come home, and I'm gonna tell you a quick story. When Mike Lewis said it's time to go, I was like, "Go where?" I feel that like London. I feel right here, right here in the UK. Right here is where I need to be. I don't need to go back to the states. And he said, "Listen, how are you gonna make it?" I said, "I'm duly ill. We can figure it out." But then the reality came. He said, "I can't. You can't stay with me anymore. I, you know, things are changing. We got to keep moving forward. You got to go back to the states to your family." And I jumped on the plane with my head down and still wonder today. I should have just turned around and ran out the door and just stayed in the UK. Stayed, stayed there in London. And now I'll, I'll, I'll have been still there right now. <laughs> you said Mike Lewis. Anyone that says Mike Lewis in a sentence definitely gets the the, the, the green card. <laughs> Definitely, definitely. <laughs> How's it going, my brother? I mean, look, you know, without question, uh, a huge influence to me, particularly in my informative years of uh, of uh, mid nineties uh, graffiti tomfoolery. Um, how's it been for you? And you know, more moreover, um, how did the GTV uh, era serve you for the age you were? I mean, I got, I got. It. It served me pretty pretty well at the time. At the time, I didn't realize what I was doing. Um, I knew that, you know, I I go videotape some stuff, you know, some graph everywhere. Plus, I was, you know, I'm I'm still a, a heavy graph head, and I'm, you know, not that I do it every, all the time, but I do it a lot, um, best as I can. And at the time, I was like a maniac, and when I saw these guys do a, a TV show. On my local channel, I was like, man, I need to get down with these guys because they're missing the whole point of hip hop. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. when I got, it was like, yo, you should just do your own thing. And they showed me the ropes on the on the, the cable access channel, um, and then and then and then that springboarded me to make a a couple of TV shows. And, and a friend of mine was like, yo, I like your stuff, man. You should make the videotape to, to sell it. And I was just like, man, ain't nobody going to buy it. And he was like, yo, you may never know. And that's when Videograph just came out and they started selling tapes. And so I kind of followed suit what they was doing. And then um, 
after that, I mean, it kind of it blew up. Like, you know, it was the first tape, then the second tape, then the third tape, then the fourth. And it just kept going. I was just like, wow, OK, so then now I'm doing the distribution myself, you know, because we had the graph mags were like the key to finding out where the stores were cross seas. I mean, cross seas in, um right here in the, right here in the States. And I was just like, OK, so there's a place in Minnesota called Hip Hop Something. I, you know, I sent them a. I don't even think emails was was out then. Nah. Well, maybe, I, I'm not even sure, but like, you know, I know YouTube wasn't out yet. Nah. So the thing was, like, the communication amongst graph writers was crazy because you just put the word out and it get back to somebody in another part of the country and they'd be interested in you having conversations. You know, I still can't <laughs> vaguely remember, you know, how, how all that worked, but somehow I get the address, you know, how many tapes you want back and forth, maybe, you know, the phone too. And, and, and that's how it was. And it, then it just got started going all over. And of course, you know, people will get the tape, the dub it for their friends and everything, stuff like that. And all, and all the writers knew it, man. And it was just like, it was, it was, it was one at the time that I was really heavy into it. Um, it was really, it was really wonderful. The love was, the love was amazing. The yeah. love was, Yeah. Well, I, I guess it went like wildfire, and it went so far as as London. I have I have up on here as homage to you, my brother. I have GTV in effect right here, as you would say. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah, I mean, so I have to keep it. I have to keep it one hundred with you. Um, from the jump, I I I caught a taste of what you were trying to do. Um, you said something within the first couple of sentences there. You were suggesting that you went crazy with it. Crazy with it to what extent? Because I think there's a kindred, you know, side to this that I think I share with you that you're like a dog with a bone, right? It's like the moment you've got an idea and you suddenly plug into a network like graffiti or hip hop in general and you realize that the fault lines are kind of similar. Like you, the magazines have the route to the distribution to the shop. So why can't the videos? Like it must have been piecing a puddle piece by piece and it must have drive you crazy yeah i mean it, it, it was kind of like basically sort of simple to a point you know what i mean like i mean there was no other videotapes out um i got mad you know respect and love for videograph um they were the first um um to do it and when i watched what they were doing i, I like i said i, I follow suit to their formula the only difference with me is that I didn't want to be strictly all graffiti because I represent all of the um, elements of hip hop. And I yeah. wanted you know, I wanted the graffiti side, of course. That was the main thing. But I wanted, you know, digging in the crates. I wanted uh, beatboxers. I wanted breakdancing in the video. I mean, like, it doesn't make sense to just have a straight... I mean, it does to a point, but, you know, back to me, back then, it didn't make sense to have one thing when you can venture out and have all these things and put them all together and make it dope. And um, for me, at a younger age, I was just like, kind of like, you know, my brain was on fire and it was just like ready. I was I was ready to do all types of wild stuff. And like what I mean, like. Like it got to a point where I just I couldn't I couldn't go to sleep or wake up without thinking about graffiti. Like my I had a graffiti drenched brain and it was just like, oh, I, you know. You know, once you see feel that 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 thing on your brain, like you wake up thinking about graffiti and going to sleep thinking about graffiti, you really start losing it a little bit. So I had to fall back just a tiny bit and and try to get the video aspect of it professional because you know, like if you look at the early tapes, you could tell like the quality of the video is kind of shattered, like it's, it's shot because I didn't take time. I would just out there grab the camera, hit the record button, let's go. That was it. You know what I mean? Until I got, until like either I got more knowledgeable of what cameras can really do. And then, and thanks to uh, Carl Weston from Videograph, who, who who took me under his wing and said, look, you got something good. Let me show you how to get a computer, edit online, mm -hmm. you know, stuff like that. he showed me how to do all that. He showed me what cameras I should buy, what camera I should get, stuff like that. So I was so... So happy that, you know, he was willing to help his competition, you know, because I didn't want, like I said, I didn't want it just to be a graph video. Mm -hmm. I was wanting what people was doing in Canada. 
That's I was the first person to go across seas to Canada to go see Duro Three and his crew out there. Crazy, crazy. You know, no, no one from the states went across seas. I mean, um, we crossed the, to the Canadian border to see what they was doing out there, and and, and that's how you know the Duro Three is is you know everybody knows him. Mm-hmm. You know, I think, um, so you know. I was I, my my vision was broad was 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 big you know and then I'm, I moved out to California and it just felt it felt a little different but I, we can talk about that too yeah we'll definitely get into that the um, early um, infancy of GTV in my mind you know sends uh, a real kind of it's almost like you're growing with the timeline of the of the videos as they come out and that's something. I mean, first of all, it takes a level of creative bravery because, you know, not a lot of people jump in feet first and try and figure stuff out while they're driving the car, right? right. <laughs> but moreover, like, the idea of seeing you develop uh, some of the earliest pieces that spring to mind was the, for me, the notorious Ovi, you know, and you guys actually being in the yard and <laughs> getting over the fence and and you're being completely out of breath like oh, so where are we at man what are we doing you know it's that kind of thing that really gets a, you know a graph head's juices going isn't it yeah man i mean like even back then i mean like the trains were clean there was really uh nothing going on in the trains i mean absolutely nothing you could just stare at the trains for your life to the end of your life you would not see one one piece row mm. and there's cameras to capture anything any moments um even with even with that night when we went out, I didn't have a light to flash so somebody gets. I didn't want to get caught, so you know. And I didn't have the best technology camera at the time. There wasn't that uh, that you know that night vision wasn't even out then. Mm-hmm. So you are looking at like what it is is what it is. The quality is is what it came out to be, and and somehow it ended up being historic. You know, historically for me and also Novi. I mean, um, Ovi. I mean that night. You know, um. You know, and, and shout outs to um Coke too. Coke too kind of he was the ambassador of GTV. He really was, man. He he went the whole mile for you. Right. He hooked me up with uh with Crazy Kings magazine when Crazy Kings first came out with Mitch. Crazy. Crazy Kings. He hooked, he hooked me up with Mitch mm. and put an ad in and if he ain't Mitch just said, I'm gonna put an ad in my magazine for you. And then after that, that kind of springboarded and then Coke hooked me up with more, you know, bronze riders. If you notice in GTV it was a, it was more mostly a lot of bronze riders because I never had got a chance to get in touch with a lot of other writers from Brooklyn and Queens. I did mm-hmm. an episode in, in Brooklyn on a couple of OG writers that I still have that I still have to piece together. There's a lot of missing pieces of a video um nostalgic footage that I still have and I'm just kind of like um trying to find the time to to sit down and 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 do all that and do it all mm. all that that's dope. there's there's a lot of lot a of, lot of like footage from the early 90s that I do have um and cataloging some of it I've, I've downloaded a few you know and you might have seen a couple on the, the graffiti um the GTV classics 1990 on Instagram that's right I've I've been showing the pieces here and there. Um, a YouTube site is also possible. Um, it should be done, like you know, and you know, and, and it's still we still got customers that's that's hitting me up and asking me to you know press a couple of DVDs. It's kind of a like not a complicated thing to do, but it's kind of like a uh, you know, to burn yeah. some DVD and stuff like that. Um, so I'm thinking about switching them over to USB drive. I've I've done one or two, but it. You know, I like to have a package, you know, so just not just handing you a drive. I don't, you know what I mean? It's, it's a yeah. lot of mental mental stuff about GTVs, you know, the backstory of it and how, you know, we can get into that and, you know, how people, you know, bootlegged it and, and then, you know, kind of destroyed a lot of things and how the Internet destroyed it, too. Yeah, the Internet plays a big part in it. I think I think for legitimacy, having uh, GTV come out the time it did, it... Um, you know, it's almost like a sign of assurance. And I know what you mean about, you know, just sending people drives and stuff. I know a lot of, you know, DJs do that when they've got archive or catalog that they want to sell on just for ease. But like you say, there is so much of a backstory. You really have to play the part of the 
well, not only are you the conduit of the uh, documentation, you know, there's a moral uh, uh, weight that that comes with that, but also you've got to, you've kind of got to play caddy to everything that's going on. You're as much in the mission as the writers themselves, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it's, you know, I, I try to stay on top of all of, of things I'm doing, um, graffiti-wise, music-wise, um, trying to, you know, back my mind, give give the those who were fans of GTV something. You know what I mean? Like, like give us something. I, I, I always hear that in the back of my head. Give us something today or... Start working on something like even all the writers be like, "Yo, what's going on? GTV, what's going on?" It's like a, it's like a, it's it's, it's to me like GTV is like a lost, uh, one of those lost black exploitation tapes. Definitely. Or, or the films, you know what I mean? Like, yo, I never seen the the Crazy Six. What's this crazy film about? Or you know, uh, yeah, you know stuff like that. Like you know, um, I haven't, um, and and. And like I said, there's multiple uh, avenues and medias that I want to... I, I really want to put it out there free for everybody to see. You know what I mean? I'm not looking for uh, anything, you know, from it as far as as far as, far as that concerned, like money-wise. You know, if somebody, if a, a film company wants to use some of the footage, um, then they'll ha- they'll definitely have to license it through me and pay for me sure. for, the, for my time. I mean, recently there's... Uh, uh, a footage that came out on the uh, graffiti is changing the face of art or something like that. I forgot the full name of the the, the thing, right. and it shows it shows a, a good good fifteen minutes of my stuff, and like they didn't license it. So I, you know, I talked to them about it. I mean, the guy was kind of cool, you know what I mean. But you know, when I sat back and I understood it a little bit, because you know. I come from that hip hop era where you just start jacking all types of things to make one thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. And and what's funny is that the footage that they did jack was some of the footage I I, I clipped from a news news channel. <laughs> <laughs> the irony, right? <laughs> so the irony, the irony of it all is that like now it's my turn to get jacked. And but they put my name in the video, and that and that right there, and they got the video already got a million view, views. So you know the Dooley's name is like been seen a million times. So I think that's right there is 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 worth the payment. You know what I mean? That's right. It holds weight. It holds a lot of weight. It holds weight. You know? Yeah. So um, like I said, you know, you know, um, uh, I definitely uh want to want to do something like that for the. I've, you know, I've been thinking about a lot of things. Like, what can I really do for the graph community? Like a jam, like a GTV awards, uh, stuff like that. Get find a space down here, you know, in Connecticut, and start doing graph jams. Graph jams down here has been like really. I think they're coming back, but it's been like fifteen years that we really didn't never had a graph jam except for the oh. New York game. No graph jams, and since no. what in for fifteen years. Yeah, not too many, man. Not too many. Not, not you know. You got your local 106th Street uh, New York uh, Hall of Fame. You got that. You know, I mean, couple of things, but not no major, major. Like, there's never really been a major jam except for uh, maybe St. Louis. They call it Paint Louis. Um, that has like a miles and miles long, like a uh, what do you call it, a levee wall. Hmm. So, so, and that, that's a pretty big thing. But that, you know, and it's also like a huge Midwest. Uh, type of thing in the in our in the in the states here, but you know you don't really see them popping up all the time, or you know people orchestrating uh things because you know hip hop has become um really weird here in the states. You know, especially like where I live at in Connecticut, mm-hmm. it has been really weird. Like meaning that, just say we had a brand Nubian, a uh, Sweet Tea, and uh, Dress from Black Sheep performing, mm-hmm. and then. And like twenty people who paid to get in, and nobody else was in there, except for staff and crew. Nice. So I was, I was saying like, well, where are we? You know what I mean? Like you, you know, anybody who loves you know hip hop music or rap or break dance, or whatever, they should always be representing to support the artists, new, old, you know, back and forth, etc. You know, where do you think that Connecticut man? Like, I mean, I always, and maybe it's because of GTV. Like I remember seeing episodes where you guys hit some freights, and you know there was a lot of, I don't know, a lot of 
you were vocalizing a scene, but you yeah. don't, obviously you don't look in. So so, how come it's like that's strange that it's Connecticut is like that. I, I, I mean, I mean, I I think, I, and, and don't get me wrong, you know, for all my Connecticut writers, they you know they do a lot, they do their thing, you know. What I mean, it's a, I mean, it's a lot going on now, better than before. But so I'm talking about when when the writers now get together they do you know a lot of legals and there's a lot of bombing now now i'm starting to see bombing when i should have been seeing bombing 20 years ago or 10 years ago mm-hmm. now now the city's starting to be a little bombed a little bit you know it's a little exciting but it also has a limitation it ain't really you know you see you start to see new cats and then but you see new cats every five or six years you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. so it's not like uh you got new writers popping out all the time or writers are just popping up up everywhere. You know, it's, it's a time, like a time lapse on, on everything. But I think that, uh, the reason why, I mean, like we, you know, we're, we're, we're a state where like, we're like the, the, the behind New York We're we're, you know, we've never gotten a chance to be as equal as like Philadelphia or New Jersey um, you know what I mean, or Boston when it comes or, to creatively in general, or or more so for hip hop, just for hip hop. Yeah, we never never got that plateau where we where okay, it's New York, New Jersey, Philly, and Connecticut. Yeah, and so we got Boston, New Jersey, Philly, New York. You know what I'm saying? So what I mean by that is that I just feel that that Connecticut gets skipped over because of the, maybe the, you know, the old TV shows about Connecticut. Maybe it's just, it's just like, it's not a, a supporting state. So when I was doing GTV, you know, I, I held Connecticut on my back, um, New Haven on my back. And, and, you know, we had our, we had our own thing. We had our own thing, but, you know, after that, it just seems like, like there's not really, there's a scene, but it's it's, it's really tiny, it's really tiny, especially nowadays with the new generation of, of whatever they're doing. Um, I don't see, like, there's no like, who's the hottest writer in Connecticut? You can't say that. Mm. No one knows, right? Who's it's, the best? Yeah, yeah. No, I, I get you. I get you. The best DJ. Mm-hmm. Who's the best uh, MC? We don't even know what the hottest rapper is right now, you know. And plus, I'm a little older, so I could be judging from a different perspective. But um, Perhaps, yeah, but you not... still feel the heat on the ground, like no matter right. how old you are. If you're into hip hop, you feel the heat. I'm still around. I'm still, you know, I'm still. I DJ like, like even when I DJ, I do <clears> like <throat> underground hip hop parties and underground. You know, stuff playing like a lot of you know music from cross seas, music from Malaysia, whatever. Wherever mm. it takes a dope beat, I want to play. And like you know, that sometimes the parties is good, sometimes they're empty. You know what I mean? We do all vinyl nights. We are having hard times getting people out to just just come just chill out at the lounge to check out vinyl nights. You know what I'm saying? It's kind of weird. Um, it could, it could be a lot on promotions and stuff like that, but you know. We'll, you know, we're, it's, a, it's a fighting battle, but we are soldiers. You know, my crew. You know, we we're a bunch of soldiers and generals, and we we're, we're still fighting the fight. So, you know, hopefully, you know, things are changing a little better. Our city is growing a lot. They're doing a lot of building. A lot of people moving from New York to down here. Mm. So they look for that same New York vibe. You know what I mean? Yeah, and, and you guys are figureheads of the scene, to say the least. And um, what's interesting about that scenario that you're you, you you're going through? I mean, it. To be fair, it's it's very similar to a lot of UK cities and smaller, you know, bigger mm. towns. But um, normally, when there's a uh, somebody would you, you, a lot of times, those cities are only so big for a entrepreneur like yourself, a creative like yourself, someone who wants more. They don't know you don't normally see um, those pioneers staying in the same city because they want to expand and find new outlets. It's quite honorable that you, you're still in Connecticut and still holding the flag. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, I mean, put like this, you know, 
you go different parts of connect. I mean, different parts of the states. You got different laws. You got different different people. See here, I you know you know you know your backyard, and the weather here is is not always sunny. It's not you know, but it's but it's but it's but we don't get no hurricanes. We don't get no tornadoes. You know, we don't get wild weather. Mm. We just get standard weather. Four, you know, four weathers. You know, I mean, spring, fall, winter, and summer. That's what we get. And we get, we probably get like two, two and a half to three months of each. It's a good right? balance, man. People don't know right. how important that is. And plus, you know, you go somewhere else where the sun is constantly shining, then you got to worry about the people that are crazy in them, 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 them sunny states. Mm hmm. Here, you know, and I'm sure that you guys are looking in like the guns and how how the shootings, the random shootings, and all the the gun violences here in the states is crazy. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But here in Connecticut, you can kind of weave through, you know, through all that madness without without getting caught. Up. You can get caught up anywhere. Don't get me wrong. Uh, you know, especially here in New Haven, you know, we do have a crime rate, and you know, we do have a lot of uh, different pockets of I wouldn't say gangs, but crews. That like to, you know, cause chaos when they when when they do cause chaos. Mm -hmm. um, but it is a great city at you know at the same time. It's really a, a wonderful city. It's an affordable city. Um, like so, I went moved back to California. You know, when I moved there, I went to the store to get a three dollars uh, sandwich, and it was ten dollars then. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, so that sandwich now is twenty dollars. You know what I mean, like. But I still, but here I still could find a place where I could get a three dollar sandwich. You know what I mean? Mm. So, but it made more sense to stay here. You know, as much as I would like to be on the island, with my feet out, and just just live life on the beach. You know, you still got to worry about that one day a tornado or that, or a tsunami is going to come and wipe you out. Yeah, nothing is ever the picturesque right thumbnail, so, right? I, I decided that. To stay here, you know, when I came back from London, I, you know, I had a I had a girlfriend now who's my wife. Um, so and then we had you know children, and I mean, and we're and we're great, and we've been together for like almost twenty years. So that's um, fantastic, man! Congratulations on that, brother. Thank you, thank you, thank you. There's no yeah. mean feat. There's no mean feat. Um, so what was so being Connecticut? So what's the uh, earliest documentation you did for Graph? Was was that Connecticut based, yeah, that was all Connecticut based. That's that's uh, that would be on uh, um, G well, of course, GTV one, but the TV show mm -hmm. was was local, New Haven, uh, graffiti, and uh, and that was like, I, like I missed like this. There were seven other episodes that I couldn't uh, save from the TV show, wow, and you know, like being in the projects and listening to this dude. Play the drums and re and doing the James Brown drums, funky drummer, in his in his in his bedroom. And his grandmother comes, kick the door, and was like, "Yo, you gotta turn this shit down." He's like, "Grandma, these people from the TV station, you can't be doing that shit." <laughs> <laughs> Come on, grandma! <laughs> and he's fucking hitting and fucking each other. Hey, the fucking. <laughs> <laughs> okay, come on, grandma! <laughs> It's stuff like that that you know. I wish I wish one thing I do wish about GTV that I would have uh, archived it better back then. Would would have took more care of it because um, it is my baby. It is my project. You know what I mean? Like I wish I would have took care of it. Like this still like I don't have a a, G, a freight issue of GTV eight package. Um, like even this one here, you know GTV four. Mm. You know, that's a little, little. I had to get this from somebody. I think that's the uh, one I got up here, bro. That's the one I got right here. Oh yeah, that's this one. This one was like one of my favorite ones. Yeah, that was so dope. It it, it was it was real. It was real. It was real because like you had you know you had Ewok. You had then you had guy who's the dude with the pit bull rapping as well. Oh, that's uh um uh, um um shoot yeah yeah I know you're talking about. That guy, man, um, I think I don't know if it was Ramel or 
Um, something like that, isn't it? Yeah. Something like that. R.A. something, I forgot. Yeah. Um, he, he, he was known back then. Like, he was known to almost blow up. But, you know... Once you once you get that little urgency and you don't, nothing comes out of it, you just take another turn and just forget about your talents. Yeah, I have not seen him in a long time, and I had some other video of him in Burger King rapping. I just found. No way, <laughs> that's yeah. amazing. Burger King and he in McDonald's or some shit, and he was you know, and he's and he's a uh, cousin Row, cousin Row, cousin, cousin Row. Ro, that was it. Yes. <laughs> So, you know, if I run into him, I'm going to mention him. I'm like, yo, you, you made an impact on some some people, you know? And, and, and but I think, um, yeah, I mean, but like that area where we filmed him with the pit bulls and that metal wall that we, or you always seen his painting on, mm. um, that was a, a, a neighborhood wall that was just metal that had posters on it. And when I went up to it and tapped, tapped on it, I was like, yo, this is a metal wall. And we went inside and seen the owner, and he was just like, do what you guys want to do. I do not care. I said, we want to do some art. He said, that's even better, man. He said, do what you want to do. And we were painting that same community for like over 10 years. I literally I literally had 13 graffiti walls. I tried to turn this shit into the Bronx. <laughs> no, no way. Um... Yeah, we had 13 graffiti walls. 13 graffiti walls in New Haven. Facts. Some illegal, some... Sometimes we even went out and just said, fuck it, if they stop us, what they gonna do? They gonna tell us to stop anyway. And yeah, we yeah, were yeah. Just walls, you know, they will last like a couple of weeks and some will get burnt over. But no, nah, we had we had a good community of, of graffiti writers. And then, you know, when I left, that's when all, all the graffiti walls, you know, died because um, I wasn't curating them with different writers, the same writers that was here, they couldn't maintain the the quality mm. um, that, you know, like, like even when, uh, Congo, uh, R us and, uh, mist, mm. they came through down here through, uh, this guy, uh, Mitch, Mitch hooked it up. And I just picked up the phone. He was like, yo, I'm sending some European writers your way. And I was like, um, you know what I'm saying? I was like, what? It's like, yeah, you got a spot. I said, I got a spot. Sit them down. And they came down that one day. They jumped on the train. I, I picked them up, brought them, brought, them, brought them to the wall. They painted. And then, you know, they went back, back to New York. That's crazy. Big up, miss. That's madness. Wow. Yep. yep. And uh, Gold, G-O-A-L, he came down and painted. Um, Man. No, it was like if you were like a real gateway to like bringing people into areas of well Connecticut, like places where a lot of writers wouldn't normally travel to, to people that wouldn't normally receive such a high speck of graffiti. Right. I I always like I said I always felt that I had I had to for me I I might have I think I I, I seen the culture kind of dying. And I was just like, yo, I can't let it die. I got to be one of those guys. And I and I have to say it like this, you know, for the being like, you know, a, a black man where I don't really see too many graffiti, too many black graffiti writers lately. Yeah, yeah. Um, maybe this might be more now than before right. um, due to internet stuff like that. But, but at one point I was just like, you know, I could count on my hands all the famous ones that I know that weren't from subway art. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I had to meet myself, you know, was like, look, we're not gonna let that die. You know, we're not gonna let that die. We're gonna, we're gonna um we're gonna keep going so mm -hmm. others can be inspired. Because when I started writing abroad from my city, uh, you know, I, I was hanging with my boy Sket, um, my boy Eros and and those were, you know, uh, white guys that I, that I met through graffiti, and it and it and it branched me out to different people all over the world. You know what I'm saying? Just by hanging with those dudes, like you know what I mean? Because before I was not hanging out with white guys; I was hanging out, you know, in my hood. Mm -hmm. So when I started meeting these dudes doing graffiti, and we, you know, we had a common bond. You know what I mean? Graffiti put a lot of things together. Hip hop culture in general 
just took people from out their norm and put them with people that they didn't even know. But the love was there for mm-hmm. what we did together. You know what I'm saying? That's what's really beautiful about, you know, graffiti in the hip hop culture. And you cannot say that, that it didn't do it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. People, people wouldn't really be like, kind of like in this gumbo, you know, that we are in, the, in within the culture, you know what I mean? Like, but I, I think that that was one of the few things and like, even another thing that brought in my horizon was uh, my good friend Vinny, who owns this hip hop shop called Ten Times Dope, Italian dude. Right. He said, "You come with me snowboarding." I went snowboarding for the first time. We got on top of the mountain. He was like, "What do you see?" And I was just like, "Yo, man, this is beautiful, man. Mm-hmm. I've never seen nothing like that in my life." You know what I mean? Like just to see all snow, mountains, and and stuff like that. Because I was, you know, I lived in the, lived in the hood, like you know, almost in the project. So. It was just like, you know, that that's when I really, that's when, like I said, when I started going crazy with graffiti, I said, okay, so this is an outlet for me to be with other people and other people to be with people like me. You know what Being I mean? Being in those other environments, broadening your horizons. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah I feel that. I feel that. Um, you, normally wouldn't, you normally wouldn't just go, because I remember going to, like I said, I hang out with my boy Sket and, and Eros. I wouldn't go out to Hamden because you'd be too afraid of one getting beat up, two, the at that time the police. You know they pulled over every car that ever went out there. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? So, but you know I took you know some chances to go out there, and when I was out there, it wasn't really like that. You know what I mean? It was just all in the mentalities in the mind. You know what I mean? You think it's that way? It's not like that. Yeah, yeah, every, that's right. You know, it's it's, it's 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 what the what we're programmed to think. Um, you know, don't go there. You're going to get beat up by the police. You're going to get killed by this and that. Or you don't go to the ghetto. You might get beat down. You know yeah. what I mean? I might rob you. You know, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's all, it's all this, you know? You look, you thinking about it, it's going to happen. You know, if you... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. True say. But, um, for... I mean, in the back of your mind, be like, yo, I'm going to get caught. I might get caught. I might get caught. You're going to get caught. Yeah, yeah, totally. Totally self-fulfilling prophecy, right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, Dee, for its time though, I mean, you know, we're talking about, oh, you're talking about like uh, early to mid 90s where the landscape is very different. You mentioned earlier that, that, you know, the trains of that time, you'd rarely see even like a mosquito bite of a tag. Um, it was a very different time in, um, in, the, in the culture. Um, and nowadays, you know, through the, through the wake of uh, Instagram and social media platforms, you're seeing a lot of activity nowadays, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm really, I'm really, I'm, I really like the fact that what's going on is is, 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 is amazing. You know, I wish they let them trains roll. That's the only issue. Mm. I wish they let the trains roll. A lot of those New York trains, some might make it to the other side of the city and might come back and park. Yeah. Some might just go straight to the yard. Um, but I have not yet seen one in person until, you know, since, since 80, 687, like nice. seeing a train in person, um, um, unless I did it, <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, but never saw a New York subway roll right by me and like, Oh wow. Just shit in my pants. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> You know, it's it's bound to happen if I'm out there enough, but I don't live in New York. But um, I think that what's going on, I mean, I, I, I got to hands down give it give it to all the all the, all the, all the brothers across seas, man. You guys, they, they've been, I, I don't know how you do it, man. I know even when I went to France, the highway was crazy. Highways are crazy in Germany too, right? Mad. Yeah, yeah. And even I went over to... Uh, What's that place? Offenburg. Mm. Well, Offenburg was really clean, but getting to Offenburg was crazy. I was like, yo, so much graffiti on the highways. I couldn't even believe it, man. It was just like a nonstop head turning. My neck was hurting. I was like, holy shit. It's, it's, it's all too consuming, isn't it? Like, you, it just becomes the norm. <laughs> so much crap. Norm. It became the norm when I stayed in France for a month. I was just like, yo, you know, I wish I did. I did a little bit out there with, uh, I forgot what's the name. Um, Pisco. Mm, I did a nice. 
graph with Pisco. Pisco's my boy. Me and Pisco became real tight. So hopefully I'll see him again sometime soon in the new future, near future. I've seen him twice in the he came to New York. I went to visit him. I, I drove up to New York to go see Pisco. So that's he's dope. Easy. Yeah, he, he, but you, but you see what I'm saying? Like that's something that you know I would have never done if it wasn't for graffiti. Yeah, it introduced me to a wonderful guy. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Or girl, you know it, it's 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 amazing, man. It's amazing. I love I love graph the the art form. I mean, if you would if you would have seen it when I saw it on the trains in New York. As a young kid, watching the most amazing gallery of art and a language that spoke to me, characters that looked like me, street characters on the train, mm. wild styles, colors. You, you know, you see like steam throw ups going over a production. Like, you don't see, you don't never see, you don't never hear about that side of how, you know, scene was destroying trains too. Just like as much as Cap, I've seen it. I've seen it. Whole bunch of throwups, seen scenes over everybody. Throwing really? Up. <sighs> yeah, you don't. They don't talk about that. They don't talk about how he had beef too. He wasn't. He wasn't the uh, the the Jesus Christ of fucking graffiti. He <laughs> he he had beef too, and he'll probably you know he don't. But they don't talk about them stories, you know, with him. Um. Why don't they talk about those stories with people like Scene? Why is that? Um, I think I think they want to keep. Of course, he's he's like the god. The, the I, I'm not gonna say you know you could say the Godfather or he he's a, he's an icon. Mm-hmm. So to, to say something like that might might tarnish him. And you know, and I'm not discrediting his work. His work it was amazing. He was the smartest one out of everybody because he kept it simplicity enough for you to read it and enough for you to uh enjoy it mm. it was billboard everybody was doing wild styles but we were speaking to each other he wanted to speak to the world which was which that's what i got from him but when i did as a young and he top the bottom scene throws going over going over other writers cursing at them and everything like that wow. i was like yo, i was like yo this dude this dude is crazy. Like, I didn't know he had beef like that. Yeah, people went over his trains. And he went right back over them too. So, you know, he probably had a right to, but you don't normally see, like, what I saw the day that I went and took pictures, what I saw um, as far as the graffiti trains, uh, stuff like that. I mean, but but that's part of the feeling that I have still is stored inside of me. Seeing somebody with that name going over other productions, seeing other production, other people going over him, mm-hmm. seeing it was a war. You know what I'm saying? People got yeah, big, wow. trains, but you got to understand New York's a big place. So it was a war going on. So when 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 everybody started destroying the trains heavy. I mean, that's when the that, that's when it started dying because people were like, "Man, I want to go ahead and do a, a, a eight hours, seven hour piece in the tunnels, getting dirty and everything." They, so as soon as we pull out, somebody's going to write their name all over it. Fuck yeah, that. yeah, yeah. That's fucked. What well, kills the scene, and and then the, the the powers that be don't like it neither because it looks messy. Right, right, right. So you know, if you seen them old videos and how the insides of the, tr- of the trains were and the outsides of the trains, it, it, it was a really, it's a, it was a. Or, or wild reality. That's why they don't want the the subways to be, uh, uh, you know, with heavy graffiti on it because it brings it brings something to the inner you. Like it brings in uh, something comes out of you. It's, it's an emotion. You know what I'm saying? Like it's it's, it's crazy. Like you know, well, emotion. I, I, explain what the emotion. What from a from a spectator's point of view, from a writer for both. Um. Because I can imagine it from both. Yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I can imagine from both both perspectives. I mean, for, for somebody who, for, for, well, at this time, like, everything is happening, like, breaking, B Street, graffiti, uh, wild style. And then to go see it live in New York, it's like, <laughs> yo, it, it made you a, a hip-hop connoisseur or a hip-hop legend or a hip, uh, anything hip-hop cultural you 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 embraced it like it was your mother. Wow. You know what I mean? Like you hugging your grandmother. 
your grandfather, like that feeling, like damn, I, you know, when I see some real hip hop, I be like, ah, yeah. you know, and like when I and and with the music today, don't give me that. So when I see somebody doing it a little bit, I still get that hug, and it makes me want to go and say, man, I'm on. I was going to the lab and try to make a little something, see what happens. Yeah, that's um, right. Inspiring. It's inspiring, and but but one thing I don't like about it is just like some people try to try to put age limits on hip hop. Like, mm-hmm. oh, you be doing this, or like when you get a certain age, they want to knock you to the ground and let the new the new generation kick in. Yeah, I feel that that there's something timeless about where hip hop has gone. I think with I don't think it's the only genre that suffered, really. I mean, you know, when you consider the Rolling Stones to Nirvana to right. Oasis, you know, there's a c- correlation there where they all kind of come from the same cloth. Right. You know, the, the musical integrity and the the, the, the the ensemble, it's all it's all relative. But yet the generation that picks it up, they almost want to rebel against the, orig- the original rebellers <laughs> they don't want old people like in there even though it's kind of the same sort of shit i'm not sure if hip-hop has that i don't think it has that but i know where you're coming from there is this um they, they i think media try and create a divide don't they yeah yeah i mean because you know the powers that be that are making the money they they take out the old like if these old people come around it'll make our new money maker irrelevant mm. because they would like to the music that was before than the currently liking the music now. So this way, we, we, you know, we don't give that slot that in between, like, you know, every four new songs, you should, every, like, Kara, Karis once said, every four new songs you play, you should throw an old school song on. Totally. Exactly like how the albums used to play out. I mean, nothing beats that boom bap, you know, go straight to premiere for that boom bap beat, right? Exactly. <laughs> on your album. Exactly. I mean, you know, and it's just, it's just like you know, um, graffiti is is it's a it's a language, man. Mm. And I explained that to somebody. She said, "Oh, I painted a bridge, and 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 it was fine for a long time. My art, my mural was nice until one person put it, wrote something on it. I said, then another person wrote something next to that, right? She said, "Yeah." I said because the guy that wrote the first one was just doing it because he it was a clean it was a blank a blank space mm-hmm. but the second guy was doing it only to talk to the to the first guy so true and then the others the others will come because they see them two talking they want to join in and now they're writing their names next to their names so those other two can see who's next and so then when, sick it's so true but when it comes you know when it comes it's all, they're all talking to each other like, hello, yeah, I'm here too. You're not the only one. <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> so, it's one um, big WhatsApp group, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's a big chat. It's a big chat group. And um, it's, 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 it's amazing to see that. Like, you know, sometimes I see a bunch of tags. Like, I was at the pizza place, had a mark on me, and uh, and the electric box was, was tagged up. And I was just like, you know what? <laughs> yeah, a piece of that. <laughs> You know, and I know they was like, there was this dude writing on writing on something. Oh man, that but, never leaves then, you, right? Never leaves you. <laughs> ne- never, believe me, I've been tempted so much. You know, I've been tempted so much. The uh, well, as far as GTV, let's you know, let's let's keep our eyes and ears open for it. Maybe you know, I could put the full YouTube channel out, and we can all just sit there and enjoy the moment. Um, would love that, man. I would just be, it would be my marath, my daily marathon. I'd love it. That'd be so yeah. sick. So yeah. much history. And there's still more in the crates, you know. So I'm to let everybody know there's still, you know, I could do a number 10, you know, it'll be all right. It'll all right. It'd be all right footage, but you know, there's nothing in there that's crazy that I didn't get a chance to put out. But there's some, there's some pretty good footage of some train bombing, some, um, some walls, some freights. Um and, and some unique people, and I like to thank all the writers that was on GTV, and you know, and, and a few of them passed away, which was kind of still kind of crazy. A lot of them passed away. Really? Um, that, yeah, a lot of writers that's on GTV passed away. No way. Give give us some names that we can hell up. Um, 
Okay, so let's let's uh GTV four the 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 um okay, so I know that uh let's see. What's his name? Uh Spec. Spec yeah. passed. He's writing in he's writing on the train in GTV four. Nace passed away. We all know that. Mm-hmm. Um somebody, well, you know, uh Case Two passed away. Mm-hmm. Um there was a couple other people. Uh, there's, there's, there's a, there's, there's a few more, a few more that mm-hmm. I gotta go back and look and be like, oh yeah, you know what I mean. Rest but in peace, they, rest in peace to all of them, man. Those, yeah, you know, but they, their legacy lives on through GTV. Oh, um, yeah. you know, and a lot of people say that, like, like, it was like, oh, you're the only one that really had a good footage of them painting trains and, and this and that, and giving me love and props, you know, saying stuff like that. And now, you know, definitely want to give a shout out to everybody. All the graph writers just keep going, man. Uh, you know, do your graph. Also, put it on put it on a medium that you can sell it to. You know, mm. don't be don't be scared to sell your work because at the end of the day, you've developed a skill that a lot of people don't have. Um, so sell it, sell it to them. You know, don't sell yourself. Sell them the artwork. You know, put some money in your pocket, do your graph, and have fun. You know. That is one hell of a positive Jerry Springer sign-off, man. I really appreciate that. And long live GTV, brother. Like, more the merrier. Get him out there. And if you haven't checked out GTV, people, you can go online and check out the rarities, some exclusive bits, and I do this. There's going to be more coming soon. Brother, thank you so much for joining me. Anytime, man. Just give me a call whenever you want. Have some 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 chat. You got you got yeah, you got a blank space. And, you know, just, just hit me up. It's like, no, I'm, I'm looking to fill this, fill this night up with something. Let's talk about something. My guy, that would be wicked. My brother, thank you so much for joining me, Dulio. Enough respect to yourself, my brother. All right, now. Take care, man. All right, thank you. Wicked. Killer Keller podcast. Out like in was out of fashion, people. Dulio, GTV, another, another legend through the place. All right, sharing is caring. Tell a friend to tell a friend. If you don't know, get to know. All right, stay lucky, people. Don't talk to her, I wouldn't. Peace. <laughs> that was dope, D. Thank you so much.